Inside historic Walls Gym, a trip to the NIT semifinals is at stake. Coming up next, Seton Hall hosts UNLV in the NIT quarterfinals. The winner of this game joins Georgia and Indiana State in the semifinals, while VCU and Utah complete the picture. Derek Jones and Perry Clark with you right now. And Perry, as we get a look at this matchup, it was Dre Day in round two for Seton Hall. It really was. He had a tremendous ball game. And he's done so much for this team. He drives the ball to the basket. He can defensively block shots. He takes tough shots. He gets grip rebound. He's the kind of new guy to keep everything together here at Seton Hall. On the other side for UNLV, the Boone Twins are back in business. Two's always better than one. And Kalen uh, does a great job of shooting the basketball while Caleb does all the hard work inside, and together they give him a great one-two punch that has carried him here to Seton Hall. What energy in this building tonight as the fans here at Walsh Gym will try to help lift their team into the NIT semifinals. A great atmosphere here on the campus of Seton Hall University. Meanwhile, for UNLV, this is becoming old hat for them, making the trip to New Jersey. They did so in the opening round of the NIT. They beat Princeton by seven. Now back here against a tough Seton Hall team. Yeah, but this is a little different flavor because, you know, this part of Jersey really responds to Seton Hall. They've always had a following here, and playing in this building is awful difficult. I'm sure they would have rather played downtown, but this is old school basketball, and that's what we're going to see here today. It's an intimate but loud setting here at Walsh Gym as the fans have been on their feet pregame and are now ready to rock here for what will be the sixth all-time meeting between these two historic programs. It'll be Jaden Betiaco and Rob Whaley Jr. tipping it off. And the NIT quarterfinals. We are underway here from Seton Hall University and Walsh Gym. Derek Jones and Perry Clark with you as the Pirates and the Running Rebels about to decide who will join Georgia and also Indiana State in the NIT semifinal round. VCU and Utah will follow us tonight. Pace is very important for the Seton Hall team. They, they, they don't have the depth of the bench, so they really want to play at a pace, and that's the pace they want. Mr. Richmond going downhill. Right to the rim, Kadari Richmond to get the Pirates started off in positive fashion. Dedon Thomas, the exceptional freshman guard in the lineup, joined by Webster, Noel, Whaley, and Keelan Boone. First turnover of the game for UNLV. They had just one in the win over Boston College on Sunday. Well, don't expect a whole lot of penetration against the Seton Hall team. They really closed the gaps down. The Pirates starting lineup, Richmond, Ade Wusu, Dawes, Davis, and Betty Ako, a formidable starting five. Off the miss by Whaley, a rebound grab by Richmond. For folks that haven't seen Richmond, he is a power point guard. He controls the ball. He likes to get to the rim. Betty Ako with the flip to the rim. Good start for Seton Hall and a turnover. Richmond one-on-one, -on -one, tried to Euro, and a blocking foul is called in the lane. As UNLV's head coach, Kevin Kruger, has to be concerned with what he's seeing from his team so far. A couple of turnovers to start, but Perry, he's done an exceptional job this year, and especially in the first two rounds of the NIT. Well, he really has. He's had some injuries, and he had some tough luck, and they got playing really well late, And uh, but he's done a real fine job. My concern when I talked to him was the size of his guard against the guards of Seton Hall, because they're 
they do a very good job defensively, as you see, shutting down the driving and passing lanes. Davis trying to get underneath, and that'll be a goal 10. A six zip start for Seton Hall to begin the proceedings in the NIT quarterfinal. Now, Vegas has a big time freshman guard in Thomas. He's got to settle this thing down for Vegas to get out and get some shots that they like and get going here. Thomas with the runner. That trickles in. That's what he does. I mean, they talk about him. He's mature beyond his age. Dad played at UNLV, and he is a really special player. They're going to need his experience and savvy here tonight. He's the Mountain West co-freshman of the year. He's also the team's leading scorer, cutting to the rim, and an easy layup for Alamir Dawes. This Seton Hall team does not chase a lot of threes. They run through sets and then get spacing and then drive the basketball. To the post for Caleb Boone. Boone working, still working, stuck. Gets it back, but it's thrown out of bounds. So what a negative start here from the turnover perspective for UNLV as Shaheen Holloway looks on. Teams oftentimes reflect the personality of their head coach. That's the case here with Seton Hall. Nobody works harder. Nobody's tougher. He's perfect for this situation. The kids respect him. He's got this community right where they want, right where he wants it. Davis can't hit the three. Thomas with a rebound. Ahead is Webster. Webster gets swatted at the rim. Kept alive, though, by Thomas. The physicality is something that this UNLV team is going to have to to get used to. And right on cue, Thomas gets flattened, which leads to a whistle. So two teams are in the semifinals at Hinkle Fieldhouse. Georgia and Indiana State getting wins last night in their games. And they will be joined by either Seton Hall or UNLV. And of course, VCU and Utah will follow this game. Entry pass to Caleb Boone, out of bounds, off of Caleb Boone. When I talked to Coach Kruger before the game, I talked about the size and the physicality of the Seton Hall team in watching. He said they used to that in the Mountain West. But I don't know if he's used to a guy like Richmond coming downhill and the size inside and the physicality inside that this Seton Hall team plays with. Out for a three, rimming no good. Ade Wusu cannot get that to drop. Seven possessions previous here for UNLV, four turnovers. Kalen Boone launches a three. That misses the mark, taken by Dawes. Dawes, nice feed down low. The layup is in, plus the foul from Betty Ako. And and one will send the big fella to the line. Betty Ako has great hands. He runs the floor really well. They always, he's what we call a rim runner. He goes to the front of the rim. Watch him right there. He just goes right to the front of the rim. They know where he's going. They just feed him the ball. He's able to finish. Derek, he's big, he's strong, he's fast, and, I'm, and he is really a factor. What a start here for Seton Hall against UNLV, and this is what you had to worry about if you're a UNLV fan, the atmosphere and the hot start here for Seton Hall as Betty Ako finishes off the three-point play. You know, you can't come into games with question marks, and I think the way UNLV is playing right now, they've got some question marks trying to figure out if the way they've been playing is going to work tonight. And I think that they got to get used to the fact of the physicality inside, that they're doing a great job of shutting down the driving lanes, and so they may have to make some adjustments. 11-2 start for the Pirates. Whaley. Now to the post with seven to shoot for Caleb Boone. Boone throws it up and in with the right hand. Nicely done by Caleb Boone. That's where he likes to operate. He likes to get the ball in the post, back down, and get to the front of the rim. Boone missed the beginning of the NIT, recovering from an ankle injury, returned for the Boston College game at 16 points. Wide open, it's Betty Ako with the hammer. 
But how about Wusu handling the ball at the point? They've got interchangeable parts handling this basketball. Wusu is one of them, and that's why he's a major part of this team. Beniaco with the contest down the floor for Davis. Richmond sizing up the smaller Thomas. The kick to Davis. Three-pointer up. No good. And the rebound controlled by Thomas. Catch and shoot by Webster. That's no good, and it's out of bounds. Back over to UNLV. A tremendous start for Seton Hall. A nine-point advantage. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2024 National Invitation Tournament is brought to you by Verbo. Private vacation rentals. Relax. You booked a Verbo. Thirteen to four lead for Seton Hall over UNLV in the NIT quarterfinal. Derek Jones and Perry Clark with you here tonight in a game that will decide who will be headed to Indiana and Perry. What a great opportunity for these two teams to join the pack in Henkel Fieldhouse. Well, it really is for the Big East. It's a chance to have an NIT champ and maybe a national championship team, too. So, and for Vegas, it's a chance to show their back. They had a great crowd the last game in Vegas. The people believe in this program, so it's a great opportunity. Now, how about this start here for Seton Hall? It's been strong, to say the least. Well, I mean, they came out and played Seton Hall basketball. And I think Vegas, like I said, they came out and they're trying to get their feet up under them and see how they have to play in this game. A lot of it is going to be on young Thomas's hands because he's got to control the tempo. The game is being played the way Seton Hall wants to play it right now. Caleb Boone deed up by Jaden Bediaco, who's the leading scorer with seven for Seton Hall. As Justin Webster pops in a jumper to make it a 13-6 contest. The winner of this game will play Georgia in one NIT semifinal next week. Vegas has gone small right now. And they do that and then watch for the defense to really pick up a, a great deal. Aday Wusu misses the three. Out is Keelan Boone. And now Thomas into the paint. Thomas may have walked there, hit the rim. Caleb Boone with the follow, and he gets fouled. Two free throws on the way for Caleb Boone. So they're not afraid to mix it up in the lane that time, Perry, to try to get no, things done. No, they're not. Uh, 24 is in the game, Jackie Johnson. The NCAA Men's Basketball Championship Sweet 16 starts tomorrow. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on TBS and CBS. For more information on tournament game times and networks, go to NCAA.com. March Madness rolling right along with a very intriguing Sweet 16 on tap as Boone comes up empty. Those are big misses because they need Boone as one of their leaders to really settle down to this environment. Pull up Jay by Dawes is in. He makes tough shots. If they give him, e if he can get easy shots like this, it's going to be a long day for Vegas. Jackie Johnson, the third, can't hit from deep. The Hall on the move yet again. Dawes will launch. Dawes has a green light, so look for him to really be aggressive offensively. And I just think for Las Vegas right now, they've got to settle down. They've got to make two, three, four passes, make Seton Hall play defense, not come down and take the first open look. Jaquan Sanders in for Seton Hall. As Johnson able to draw the foul. On that last sequence for UNLV. Betty Ako almost came up with the steal, but Boone able to control. Betty Ako is really agile for a big guy. 
He does a great job defensively. See the way he steps out, heads into ball screens. Webster tries another three. That catches the iron. And a loose ball foul coming up as Betty Ako had eyes on that rebound. He got hit, leading to the whistle. Derek, he does as good a job as I've seen a post guy this year hedging the ball screens, and it makes it very difficult to get downhill. That's one of the reasons why they had success here against Connecticut, the way that he gets out there and he's so agile and shuts down the lanes. Caleb Boone heads to the bench after picking up his second foul. We'll see how long he stays out. Dre Davis underneath the rim, and Caleb Boone's brother, Kalen Boone, picks up the foul. That's his first. See, this is what you run into when this Las Vegas team is not overly physical. So they've got to get used to what they're going to allow, what the referees are going to allow to be called and what they're not. The turn, the flip to the rim is no good by Richmond. And he will post guards. He uses his size tremendously. Kalen Boone misses on the three. That's one of his specialties during the course of the season as Dawes lost control of the ball, missed the shot. Brooklyn Hicks weaving his way down the lane and scoring. Brooklyn oh, Hicks. Was that a smart play? He went on the other side of the rim so it would not get blocked. An impressive move from the freshman. Inside to Bediaco, he gets stripped clean and a turnover as Johnson stepped out of bounds. Seven point lead for Seton Hall. When we come back, we'll take a look at some of the historic clashes between Seton Hall and UNLV. Seton Hall and UNLV had two previous meetings in the postseason. Both came in the NCAA tournament. First in 1989, the Western Regional Final. Andrew Gaze, game high 19 points to lead Seton Hall to the Final Four in an 84 61 win over the running Rebels. And then in 1991, UNLV got a measure of revenge behind Larry Johnson's game high 30 points as UNLV picked up what was the final win of their 45 game winning streak to head back to the final four where they eventually lost to Duke. Perry, how about that 1989 Seton Hall club? Some great names there. Well, I tell you what, P.J. Carlissima, I had not known him before. I was at Penn State. He had a chance to get one of the best players in the country. All he had to do was give his brother a job, and he didn't do that. And I called him and I said, look, I don't know you, but I got so much respect for you. I'm always going to root for you. And that team went on to go to the Final Four anyway, but that's just the type of person P.J. was. And what a just role model for young coaches and inspiration in this area. What a tremendous run it was for them in 1989. As Dawes flashing down the rim and scoring. This program has had such a tradition uh, from P.J. to Rafferty, and, and it's just been a staple in this community. Johnson with the runner. That misses Whaley with the rebound, turning, leaving, and getting fouled. And it's been up and down, back and forth play here in Seton Hall, yes. getting the better of it right now. Seton Hall is not one of those running up and down all the time, but they do take advantage of fast break opportunities. And Dawes is the guy that can really fill it up, and they like to get him on the break. Going back to, to some of that historical stuff, I mean, Seton Hall ran up against some of the greatest teams ever in that era. We talked about the UNLV teams, of course. The following year, after the 91 season, they end up playing Duke in the Sweet 16, and Duke ends up winning the national title again. I mean, they've had some great teams. They've had some tough luck and everything, but again, that's why the tradition here. And I think, Derek, a lot of it has to do with what they give back to the community. And that's why the community really appreciates them, because they really do give a lot back and make the community very proud. And they have 
turned up and turned out here tonight at Walsh Gymnasium. Davis inside, the flip is in. And Shonda Nganga with a bucket. Webster, long three, catches the iron, and a rebound grab by Davis. What C. Hall is basically doing to UNLV is making them a jump shooting team and not a driving team because they haven't given them driving lanes. And Whaley with a swap. Rob Whaley with that 6'7", 260 frame. He does a great job. He's always playing guys a little bigger, a little stronger, but he does a great job of battling in the middle. He might be the unsung hero on this team. He had a tremendous outing against Princeton in the opener of the NIT. Off the miss, a rebound grab by Shane Noel. I've always felt like it's important to figure out in the first half how you're going to score. And that certainly helps right there with Thomas because I think he's got to be very, very important. I think if your team understands that they can score, then they can lock in defensively. They can lock in transition. They can lock in on other things. But if they have trouble scoring, it just seems to distract them. And that pass thrown away. Out of bounds, back over to UNLV. The NCAA Women's Championship rolling right along as they head into the Sweet 16 for the fourth straight year. Every NCAA Women's Championship game on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com, your home, for all 90 NCAA championships. Eight-point lead for the Pirates. The runner is in from Webster and one. Justin Webster will head to the line to try to finish off the three-point play. Vegas likes to go to their weave action. Uh, if, if, and they run that, Webster is able to get it and turn the corner. They're trying to be able to penetrate, and this is what they had trouble with earlier, being able to get in the paint. Webster, who has aspirations one day of becoming a sports broadcaster, at the strike, knocks it down. And everybody wants our jobs. I, I, I know. Uh, <laughs> they must see your paycheck, not mine. Uh, I, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> Five point lead for Seton Hall. Ade Wusu bangs in a three. That young man does about everything for the Seton Hall team. He guards the toughest guy sometimes. How about that defensive play by Kadari Richmond? Richmond with the crossover. Nice look inside. Davis off the window and in. He's a big time point guard. When I was at Miami, I had a guy named John Salmon that reminds me of Richmond. He wound up playing about 10 years in the league. He was big and strong and very, very smart and, and got other people involved. Richmond is a very talented point guard. 20 of the 24 points for Seton Hall in the paint as Whaley as his bucket spin in. That young man just battled. I mean, that's why uh, UNLV is here. I mean, he looks undersized and he said, boy, he's going to take a beating and he just winds up giving punishment out. Whaley with a season-high 21 points against Princeton in the NIT Open. As the rebound taken away by the aforementioned Whaley. UNLV still looking for their first three. But you, but you see how far UNLV is out when they run their action, and that's because of the way the hard hedges by Seton Hall. And they come back and they're being able to score, but it's making it difficult for them to get UNLV to get in the flow and get in the paint. Whaley with five points. He only had four in the win against BC. Dawes, pull up. No good. Boone grabbing the loose ball, looking to move. Webster launches a three, rattles out. 
Tracked down by Dawes. Richmond gets a step on Boone. The flip back to Davis. He lines up a three. No good. Richmond with a rebound. The feed to Adewusu. Can't finish it off at the rack. Keelan Boone pops a three and misses everything. Six point lead for Seton Hall. Adewusu starting things up here for the Pirates. Big time shot right there. You can't give him that kind of space because he can knock it down. And then you have the drive to the basket right there. Pass underneath Davis, finishes for the bucket. Seton Hall has plenty of history with the NIT. Their 1952-53 team was the most successful and historic squad in school history in its time. It ranked number one in the country for six straight weeks and ultimately finished the year ranked number two with a 31-2 record. They ended up winning the NIT title over St. John's at Madison Square Garden during what was then considered the premier postseason tournament in college basketball. Georgia and Indiana State have already advanced to the semifinals of the NIT. Georgia will face the winner of this game. Meanwhile, VCU and Utah will follow us here tonight. Mike White has the Georgia Bulldogs playing exceptionally well. Amazing job done by them last night on the road against Ohio State. They pulled the rocking chair move on Betty Ako to force a turnover. I am surprised right now UNLV is out rebounding Seton Hall. And so they're doing the job on the glass. And uh, the neither team has really gone to the foul line a lot. So the officials are letting them bang a little bit. Only one free throw for Seton Hall so far. Boom. Again, misses the rim. See, but I think you got to go in there to make the shot. He was going in there trying to draw the foul. And I think you've got to take one more hard step, go into the defense, and, and make him commit. Richmond's turnaround shot drops. That's what he's able to do. Back down little guard, get in the paint, and score over top of people. Richmond has scored in double figures in 11 of his last 12 games. Coming off a tremendous effort on Saturday. With 11 points, 15 rebounds, and 6 assists. Boone with 10. Fadeaway jumper is no good, and then flying in is Shane Noel. And Noel will be called for his second foul of the half. I like what UNLV is trying to do. They're being a little bit more patient. They're trying to get the ball into the paint, even with their back down game. Now, it's not going right now, but I think it's staying with it that it can open up some opportunities in the second half. This has been a far different trip to New Jersey than the first one <laughs> for UNLV. Yesterday, they had 12 players that got stuck in an elevator prior to practice. They ended up being over an hour late for practice because of it, as rolling to the rim there is Dre Davis. Thomas. Whaley against the day Wusu trying to back him down. Hops in, had the ball knocked away from him, but he had some help. A foul is called. But where, where Whaley's getting the ball, he's really being extended. And it's not in an area where he can really operate and, and really be successful. And I tell you, for the young Thomas, the point guard at UNLV, this is a learning experience to play against this team, this type of defense, and seeing what they're trying to do because he has not been able to get to the rim, and he's given up the ball, and I think he's got to handle the ball a little bit more, come off with more ball screens, and create easier shots for his team. That was a sixth foul, by the way, called against Seton Hall. The next one will put UNLV at the free throw line.
Kalen Boone can't get the rhythm from three. The follow is there from Caleb Boone, who's back into the game after the two fouls, and he cuts it to an eight-point contest. Tremendous athleticism. And again, I mean, UNLV is, ha is holding their home on the glass right now. And that's what's keeping this thing close. Davis to the post for Betty Ako. Betty Ako underneath. He puts it home, but he's called for a travel first. And that sends it back to UNLV. How about the athleticism of Caleb oh, Boone? They have some of that now. Watch the explosiveness right there. Getting up over everybody. As, as UNLV gets used to the physicality and figures out how to play with the physicality, and I don't mean when I say physicality that Seton Hall's doing a lot of pushing and shoving, but they're not letting guys just run freely. They're clogging up the lane so you can't just get the ball with God to the basket. And so they, they're playing really good hard nosed defense, and they've got to get used to how they're going to handle that. See the switch right there, so he couldn't get in the paint. Webster, step back. Strong rebound by Richmond. Dawes with the flip down low. Kept alive. Ade Wusu to the post inside. Richmond, pump fake, lays it in. Good patience by Seton Hall, Perry. Yeah. But that's what they do all year. They share the basketball. They know who they are. They're not a great three-point shooting team. They share the ball. They get the ball in the paint. Whaley. Throw it away. Seton Hall with numbers. Dawes tees up a three. Money. Largest lead of the game for Seton Hall. And the running Rebels want to talk about it. A 13-point lead for Seton Hall. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2024 National Invitation Tournament is brought to you by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. I would love the opportunity, I tell you what. <laughs> Back inside Walsh Gymnasium. Tremendous atmosphere here tonight, and it's a 13-point lead. Largest of the game for Seton Hall. Rob Whaley Jr. trying to lead this UNLV team. He has five points tonight, but inside the paint, Seton Hall has really taken care of a lot of business. Well, they are, and I mean, they're really, they're limp. They're switching or hard hedging, so it's really not allowing you to penetrate. And that's why I really think that Thomas has to hold on to the ball and not just give it up and try to still create because he's their leader offensively. Thomas with the lob inside for Caleb See, Boone that's, and that's, another dunk. That's what I'm talking about. You know, early in the game, he was stopping at uh, the top of the key. He's got to penetrate. He's got to take the bumps and bruises, get in the paint, and give guys easier, look, easier looks. Caleb Boone now with six points. Richmond. Going one on one against Keelan Boone and drills a jumper in his face. You know, you got to put some pressure on him. He, he's playing like a Saturday morning at the park right now. Keelan Boone tried to answer and does. One on one action here, Perry. Coach Kruger has been working the official. And what he's trying to establish is what is a foul and what are you going to let go? Richmond, the lefty flip, drops in. He is so clever with the basketball. Richmond now in double figures with 10. And Seton Hall is hit on six straight field goals. Whaley misses once, misses twice, gets fouled, and he will go to the line for a pair. Watch him. Watch Mitchell right there. He backs it up. It's like he's not going to attack it. All of a sudden, he puts it in gear. And he's got a, uh, a layout. He provides such great versatility to this team. He's one of their top rebounders. And, of course, the lead dog in the scoring department. And more important, he's like a coach on the floor. 
and coach trusts him. He trusts those three guys with with uh, to, to really step up and to play a uh, certain way for him. Uh, it's it's so important in, in how they do things. Whaley trying to help UNLV battle back. You know, we talked about Davis earlier. Dawes has shown us his ability to defend and shoot the basketball. Those three guys, everything kind of plays through them. Zone look here. Yeah. Richmond knocks down a three. Change of defense and don't buy the ball. Ballers now. I'm just telling you, he's playing at a really good pace. Biggest lead of the game for Seton Hall. Step back, Keelan Boone. Comes up empty again. Ooh, Davis might have had a look at a three there had he caught it clean. Instead, he'll try to pound away down low. Step back, count it. Everything right now, Seton Hall, they're getting into the paint. Everything is paint inside out. And until Las Vegas is able to solve that. Davis had 18 in the win over North Texas on Saturday. Back at it again tonight. Thomas trying to find some room. Lost the ball. Three on two. Dawes leans in. Missed the layup. I, he, I don't know if he was trying to throw it behind him. I think he was looking for a potential foul there. He kind of waited up, and it looked like he was hoping maybe he'd get some contact at a potential three-point play, and they come up with nothing. Yeah, I, I didn't know if he think, I thought he was gonna throw it on the glass for Wusu to come in and finish it with a dunk or what. But he certainly had an opportunity to score the ball. 20 seconds left in the first half. Thomas down to seven. And a steal. Ade Wusu on the run. Hammer. That closes out the first half in emphatic fashion, Perry. Defense, defense, defense. UNLV has not figured out there how to score. And when guys can't figure out how to score, there you see Wusu steps in the passing lane and goes all the way and finishes emphatically. A 7-0 run for Seton Hall to close out the half. Kevin Connors and Seth Greenberg. Take it away, gentlemen. Derek, what? The NIT quarterfinals continue on from Seton Hall University. The Hall with an 18-point lead over UNLV from Walsh Gymnasium. An exciting first half of basketball. And now we'll find out who will join the semifinal crowd of the NIT in a few moments. Derek Jones and Perry Clark with you. And Perry, in that first half, the big three for Seton Hall rolled. They really did. They were on top of their game and they were able to score the way that they normally score. And because of that, they were very comfortable coming back playing really good defense. And the exceptional thing about it, it's their three leading scorers this season and they were on fire. Yeah, there you see dogs off the action right there off of the screen. And there you see Richmond pausing and, does, and then creating a jump shot for himself. But this is what he really does. He backs out like he's not ready to attack. And then he attacks the rim and finishes. UNLV has found it very difficult to contend with the trio of trouble. Richmond, Dawes, and Davis combining for 30 points between the three. And that has accounted for an 18-point lead for Seton Hall as we start up second half action. The NIT quarterfinal, the winner goes to the semifinals in Indiana at Hinkle Fieldhouse.
The block off the shot attempt by Dre Davis. Out of bounds. It'll stick with Seton Hall. How does UNLV get back into this? Okay. What they have to do is they've got to pick up the pace. I think they've got to get some turnovers, and uh, they've got to be able to pressure. They've got to run some action. They can't just run a spread floor iso because Seton Hall defensively is too good for that and has already defended it. Dawes catches in from deep. And speaking of three-pointers, how about this? UNLV has made an NCAA record 1,226 consecutive games with a three-pointer, at least one. Tonight, they're 0 for 9. They have been ice cold from deep, so history at stake here for the running Rebels. Well, again, I, they haven't found an offensive flow because of how well Seton Hall has played defense. Off of a day Wusu and back over to UNLV. And you're right, that's a great point. A lot of the shots have have not come in the flow of the offense. Now, it's been shots because I'm open, okay, I'll shoot it. But it's not, it's maybe a step out of their range or not the normal offense that they run. Whaley has that ball go off his hand, out of bounds. He thought he got held. Instead, it's a ninth turnover tonight for UNLV after turning it over just once in the win over Boston College on Sunday. Yeah, but at this point in the game, he's just got to, whatever the physicality is, he's just got to play with it because that's the way they officiate. You know, UNLV still has some time now. Dave Dawes launches and hits another three-pointer. Not if he keeps shooting like that, though. <laughs> but no, but certainly Seton Hall playing with a lot of confidence right now. Whaley. Richmond keeps it alive, tipped around and controlled by Dave Wusu. Dawes steps into it. Money. <laughs> he needs a timeout. He needs a timeout. He needs a timeout. And Kevin Kruger will call a timeout. The lead all of a sudden is up to 27. Alamir Dawes is the team's leading three-point shooter, and Perry, he has delivered here to start off the second half. He's definitely done a heat check there. He steps back and knocks down a tough three, and he follows that up by coming right back on the dribble handoff and knocking even further back another three. You think he's feeling it? This Seton Hall team right now is really playing with a lot of confidence. Seton Hall into the first half with a 7-0 run. They've started up half two with a 9-0 run, and Big part thanks to Dawes, who has 18 points now, including four three-pointers. You know, Derek, it's one thing to correct offensive and defensive errors. It's another thing to give confidence. And right now, Seton Hall, I think, is taking a lot of the confidence out of UNLV. And one of the things Coach Kruger has to do is get his team back to playing with some confidence. Whaley going at Betty Ako. He gets stuffed and a jump ball is called. The possession stays with UNLV. See, he's trying to back down. He's pulled the chair out from under him, and, but the size that they have right there just negates a lot of what UNLV is doing underneath. And the officials will signal a stop here. They need to adjust the clock. And that's what I'm saying. You got to give the kids something that they know will work and that they've got a chance to get a really good shot. And it's no indictment on coaches. We've all been there. But sometimes you hit you know, games like this where just nothing seems to be going in. You got to come up with something. That's saved by Webster. The adjustment was to move it to 13 on the shot clock. Down to seven now. Webster fires and hits from deep, and that's the first three of the game. The streak is still alive for UNLV, up to 12-27 consecutive games with a three-pointer. Dawes. Now to Davis, trying to get a step on Keelan Boone, and he lost the basketball. 
The other thing with this lead that Seton Hall has, Seton Hall runs a lot of set stuff. So they're just not going to come down and just throw up the first shot that goes in, that goes up. That's not the way Coach Holloway has them playing. They're very disciplined in what they do, very structured in what they do. So, you know, it's going to take some time, and UNLV is going to have to play really well to get back in this. So the turnover by Davis leads to a new opportunity for the running Rebels as Caleb Boone misses the jumper, and Whaley gets the follow. Whaley is really battling inside now. Five straight by the running Rebels. Bediaco, who had a nice start to the contest. And Wusu sizing up Webster with 10 to shoot. We'll try to back him down, step back, count it. Is that an old man's game or it, what? It most certainly is. <laughs> Just sizing him up and taking over. Dawes with a steal. Dawes into the lane, and he gets swatted by Whaley, and it'll be a goaltend on Whaley and UNLV as the momentum continues for Seton Hall in the NIT quarterfinal. Up big against the running Rebels. Here are our NCAA Women's Championship Sweet 16 matchups for Friday on ESPN and the app. Oregon State and Notre Dame tip off the day at 2.30 Eastern. Next, it's Indiana taking on undefeated and top-seeded South Carolina at 5. Then at 7.30 p.m., Cameron Brink and Stanford square off against NC State, followed by Gonzaga and Texas in the nightcap. Best time of year to be a college basketball fan, but how about the job that Dawn Staley has done with South Carolina? A buzzsaw yet again. She is absolutely incredible. To be able to have the disappointment she had last year, lose uh, the entire starters, and come back and retool the way she has, it's just an incredible job. Johnson getting to the paint. Inside, and Caleb Boone with another dunk. Now, if they can get penetration like that, that will give them maybe a way to play to get back in this basketball game. Boone up to eight points on the season, averaging 11 per. Davis inside, that ball batted away, and it will stay with Seton Hall with 11 to shoot. And this is an uphill climb right now for UNLV. However, there's still a lot of time left in this game. There's a lot of time left. But again, I just think feel, finding a way you feel comfortable offensively because if the ball starts going in the basket for you, the other parts of the game just seem to pick up. Dawes will fire it up again. This time he comes up empty. Johnson gets a step inside, almost walked, and then the three is in on the other end by Isaiah Cottrell, seeing some run for the first time tonight. But again, now the last two shots have come from driving in the paint and kicking. Richmond almost dribbled that one into the backcourt. Richmond. So cutting Bediaco, the flyby, the layup, down. Bediaco is really good. He's got really good hands. Keelan Boone, quick three, missed that one. Another attempt straight on. This is no good from Thomas, and the rebound grabbed by Davis. Dawes flying in, and Dawes will head to the free throw line for a pair, but how about this ball movement? Yeah, and Benny Ako does a great job of rolling through. You know, he's got good hands, you know, and it's not easy for big guys to catch the ball in traffic. Not only does he catch it, he finishes. Benny Ako has been a thorn in the side of the running Rebels tonight. Had seven points in the first half. As Dawes, the transfer from Clemson, 
knocks down the free throw. He attended the Patrick School as well. An alum of the Patrick School, Shaheen Holloway, is head coach. And one out of two for Dawes. The winner of this game will play Georgia in one NIT semifinal next week. Cottrell. And a hold will be called down low away from the ball. And it'll be Betty Ako who picks up the foul. That'll be number two on him. They're just down there jostling for position. One of the things that was really impressive with Seton Hall handling the ball screens. Underneath is Kalen Boone, who's able to connect. And it's a 60 to 38 game. So UNLV trying to claw their way back into this contest. 14 minutes left. Dawes and a foul. So Dawes on the attack got popped and a 22 point lead for UNLV or excuse me for Seton Hall in the NIT quarterfinal. The NIT quarterfinals rolling along and this is where UNLV or Seton Hall would like to be at the end of tonight inside Hinkle Fieldhouse in Indiana, originally known as Butler Fieldhouse, since becoming Hinkle Fieldhouse in one of the elite buildings in all of college basketball. That is a mecca. It really is, and uh, it's neat that they're going back to playing there. Um, and I'm telling you, both of these two teams really want to get there, and Seton Hall is playing tremendous basketball right now. See if they can hold on. Dawes on the approach is Richmond will try to pop a three, and he does. You know, the thing I like about Richmond is he lets the game flow, and then when he's needed, he inserts himself. And you have to be pretty smart to know when to insert yourself and when your team needs you. Johnson answers with a triple of his own. And after being dormant, from three in the first half, UNLV trying to come alive here in half two. Richmond, who has the ball up to 16 points. See the pace Seton Hall is playing at. The, you know, UNLV's not been able to make them play any faster than they want to play. Ade Wusu can't drill the three, but he gets the offensive rebound. Dawes on the attack. Scoop layup and a wedgie. The you know, jump ball possession arrow will go to Seton Hall. You know, I've always felt that to win big games, you have to make the other team uncomfortable. You have to make them play a certain way that's uncomfortable, do things that they're not comfortable doing. And right now, Seton Hall is playing in a comfort level that they're really used to and can operate very well in. The miss by Davis and a rebound by the running Rebels. The physicality of the guards of this Seton Hall team has not helped matters either as Thomas with the teardrop. This young man, Thomas, is going to be a really good player, and I think this is going to be a really good learning experience for him in his growth and development. First appearance in the NIT quarterfinals for Seton Hall since 1956. Trying to make their way into the NIT semifinals. Richmond with an avenue to the lane. Inside of Bediaco and beats the clock. And they might take a look at that. And actually it's going to get waved off. Betty Ako beat the clock. It looked like on the original look at that play. They're counting. They're counting. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
Coach Holloway was upset with Kodiaka because he was supposed to roll the first time and didn't. There's Coach Holloway. Has to enjoy what he's seen from his team mostly here tonight. Up 65-43 with a trip to the NIT semifinals on the line. Hicks three, rattles out for Cottrell with the follow. Couple of field goals for Isaiah Cottrell off the bench. He's got five. Ade Wusu and a foul will be picked up here by Caleb Boone for the fourth straight year. Every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships as the Sweet 16 and Elite Eight happening throughout this weekend and into next week. As the final four will begin to come into focus. Davis with five, and he got fouled with four on the shot clock. He made that one work. <laughs> he made that one work. But every time Seton Hall is getting the ball, I'm watching. I mean, they're burning about 20 seconds off the shot clock by running their sets. And so that's why I'm saying uh, UNLV has to do something to speed up this tempo. And this is the way that uh, Seton Hall likes to play. Today, Wusu, scoop layup, and oh. one. No, no it's waved off. off. It would have fell anyway, but Davis grabbed the rim. And Coach Holloway saying, why? So Cottrell will pick up the foul as we see Ade Wusu back on his feet here in a moment. Great move. Call the block. See, he grabs the rim right there. Bluff is no good. Just didn't need that, right? No. No. Cottrell will pick up the foul. As the day Wusu will get two shots. It's not a, it's not a whole lot you can say why you did that. I mean. Today Wusu knocking down the free throw. Shaheen Holloway saw there a moment ago looking on. Yeah, he went to stand at the end of the bench. You know, he's just done a tremendous job here at Seton Hall. And he's done it in a way that he's comfortable with it. And he's got these guys to really play extremely hard. And he talked about before that, you know, he chose to play in the NIT last year. He left it up to these guys. And they all really wanted to play. And that meant a lot to him. And they're playing with that spirit. And they have rewarded him throughout the NIT. They lead it here 67 to 45. We'll step out for a quick breather. Can UNLV rally back? Shaheen Holloway, a former guard for Seton Hall, played under George Blaney and Tommy Amaker. And one of the interesting things about watching his experience, th th this you would think has to be a lot of pressure on him to get this team where he would like it to be as a former player, and he's been able to succeed at that, to be able to get this team to kind of reflect his image. Yes, I mean, I think it's very important for coaching, especially coaches that were point guards, because they're used to being leaders. And uh, he was coached by one of the great point guards in the ACC and Tommy Annika. So had the ability to do that is really, really important. And he's done that. I mean, his whole demeanor is this is about the kids' journey. It's about them. I played my time. I'm happy with where I am. I love my family. I just want the best for them, and I'm trying to do everything I can to get them to the next level. Ten and a half left to go. UNLV in search of some buckets here and a big run down to seven hicks open access to the rim and a jam that's one of the few times there have not been roadblocks getting to the rim 
So the freshman flashing perhaps a bit of the future for Kevin Krueger and this UNLV squad. But Derek playing half court defense the way they're playing. I mean, Seton Hall is burning the clock. They're taking their time. They got to make them play a little faster if they want to come back. And a turnover as it goes through the hands of Sanders. Thanks for joining us here tonight. It's the NIT quarterfinal. Derek Jones and Perry Clark with you this evening from Walsh Gymnasium on the campus of Seton Hall University. UNLV in a sizable hole trying to dig out of it. The three missed by Webster and the loose ball battle won by Davis and Seton Hall. Davis hopping in and throws it off the window and in. That's another thing Seton Hall has. They have different guys can initiate the offense for them. So the foul will be picked up by Richmond. That's team foul number three. That's the first on Richmond sending Hicks to the free throw line. Hicks out of Seattle, Washington, averaged 30 points per game at one point while he was in high school as Caleb Boone back in for Isaiah Cottrell. Richmond will get a breather. It's a fan's chant one more year at Richmond. And they keep track of stuff like that. <laughs> As the senior makes his way to the bench, Hicks drops in another free throw. And it's a lead of 21 for the Pirates. And Awusu, the Euro, can't finish it off inside. Tracked down by Hicks. Johnson, a long three. That's no good. Tipped around and grabbed by Dawes. He's looking to scoop. No look big. Davis filling the lane and a foul that will send Davis to the charity strike. That's the type of break that Seton Hall likes to run now. They get everybody out, they fill the lanes and they wind up getting an easy shot. And if you collapse in the middle, then Dawes pulls up and he knocks down the jump shot from the foul line. So you just got to pick your poison. Another stat stuffer night for Dre Davis. As he sinks the first, that's the sixth team foul picked up by UNLV. Johnson out. Thomas back in. They would love to see Thomas get going a little bit more offensively. He's the team's leading scorer heading into tonight. Yeah, but his looks haven't been there. I mean, they've done a good job of pressuring hard on him, closing the gap so he can't drive past them. Webster underneath the rim. He was pinned down deep, and that led to the miss. Dawes in the lane. He lost the grip on it. Keelan Boone tries to save it, does so to Webster. Down the floor for Hicks. He throws it down. Coach Holloway going to give this about a couple more minutes, and he's already told him to back it out. He likes his offense to be organized. He knows where he wants the ball to go. This is where he takes control of the game. Hicks is averaging just two points per game. He's up to seven tonight. Davis off of one leg. Can't hit the jumper. Hicks with the rebound. Hicks squeezes a pass down low to Caleb Boone. And a run being put together here by the running Rebels. It's a 19-point game. Straight on three. That's no good from David Tubek. Tubek has only attempted six three-pointers all season. Yeah, shooting threes is not what Seton Hall does. They only average 18 attempts per game, which is 
among the lowest in the country. A day Wusu says, how about that? Into the post for Boone. Checked by Tubek. Scoop layup is in. That's where Boone likes to operate. He just hasn't had a chance to operate one-on-one -on -one down there or against a guy that's not bigger than he is. Perry, they're down 20 here. What's the approach UNLV-wise? What would you like to do as far as trying to chop into this? I think you got you to defensively pressure and see if they'll turn it turn it over and then you got to knock a couple threes down another three-point try by two back a rebound grab by Davis but he gets fouled a day Wusu and Seton Hall leading it by 20 Perry yeah and whenever things look like they were getting away a little bit Wusu steps up and is able to finish look at the step back right there Seton Hall in control Here's a look at Saturday's NCAA Women's Championship Sweet 16 matchups. We start on ABC with Angel Reese and LSU taking on UCLA at 1 Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific, followed by Caitlin Clark and number one seed Iowa squaring off against Colorado. Then over on ESPN, Baylor takes on freshman phenom Juju Watkins in USC, and we cap the day with Paige Beckers in UConn facing Duke. All four games are also available on the ESPN app. That is a star-studded lineup, and of it course, really including is. Caitlin Clark for Iowa. Uh, isn't she amazing? I mean, unbelievable. Yes. And the way she's handled everything with such grace. Davis will head out, and Gonga back in. And Seton Hall now is extending their pressure. I expect UNLV to extend their. They've got about a three-minute period right now to try to cut this thing to about 10. Boone. Now to the block for his twin brother, Caleb. Flip shot, right hand, no good. Too strong, but two Seton Hall players there. And they knock the ball out of bounds. Back over to the running Rebels. Seton Hall is just, when we talk about physical, they're just, they just don't move. So when you bang them, they don't go anywhere. Webster corner three knocks it down. That's a good start. So Webster able to find some space there to hit his second three pointer of the game. And this has been the problem for UNLV on the other end. They have not slowed down the big scorers of this Seton Hall team. Ngonga tried to lob it in to Richmond and it's stolen. Thomas. See, Thomas had a chance to shoot the ball right there. Johnson falls to the floor. Able to keep it alive to Thomas. Thomas, floater is up. That doesn't reach the rim. May have been partially deflected. It was. It was. Adey Wusu. And that ball batted out of bounds. It'll stick with Seton Hall. But a team plays defense as well as Seton Hall. When your opportunities are there, you got to take them. You can't pass up shot opportunities when, when they're there because you're not sure you're going to get a better one down the line. Seton Hall led by as much as 27 in this game. They have not trailed. The corner three is in from Jaquan Sanders. 34% shooter on the year from deep has extended the lead, but Keelan Boone cuts it down to 79-60. That's what they needed from him. I mean, it's still, it's still not too late, but the clock is ticking. They need to knock down some threes. And defensively, it's going to be hard to make the Seton Hall team play any faster than they want to play. And Gonga will launch and knock it down. See, that's the value of Richmond. You know, he, he absorbs the pressure, and he gets guys easier shots. 
So it doesn't matter how you come in a man zone or whatever. He still is in control. He's still getting his teammates good shots. That's his first three-pointer of the season, by the way. Rare air for Ngonga. And he got a little too out of control there. He said, my bad. He got a little bit too happy there after the three. An 82-60 lead for Seton Hall in the NIT quarterfinal. The winner goes to Hinkle Fieldhouse. Another terrific NIT quarterfinal is next. Coach Visa, you have to deal with Brandon Carlson. Carlson's a matchup problem. A seven-footer can step out and shoot the ball. Terrific passer, but also can go down to the post, catch it, face, and score. I'll put a lot of pressure on the defense. The Rams and the Utes coming up after we go final in Jersey. Derek? Seth, we appreciate it. Indiana State and Georgia already advancing to the semifinals. BCU and Utah next. The winner of this game will see Georgia. That's quite a field next week. It really is, and the Bulldogs are really playing well. Mike White has just done a really good job with that team. A lot of close losses in the SEC, but they've stepped up and won a lot of close ones here in the NIT. 82-60 lead for Seton Hall as Johnson missing the three. You know, whoever, you know, for, for playing this Seton Hall team, you got to figure out how you're going to be able to score because defensively, they're just really impressive. Sanders drills it from deep. And then they're so patient. And I give Coach Holloway so much credit. He knows the way he wants to play, and he's got everybody on the same page. They are selfish. They, they look for each other. Kaelin Boone tries a jumper that falls off the front of the rim. And Seton Hall controls. Yeah. Derek Lute, but it's been a really successful year for UNLV. I mean, they had no some doubt. injuries early. They lost a couple of close ball games. They had a five-point play that beat them during the season. I mean, so they've got a lot to build on and a tremendous freshman. No question about it. It's a UNLV team that competed well in the Mountain West. They finished in fourth place. They have some wins against NCAA tournament teams. It's the inconsistency for them this year, in large part because of the injuries. They only had 14 minutes of time this season where they were at full strength. It's tough to win that way in the long run. Very much so. And a foul call. On the approach by Boone. As Keelan Boone will step to the line here. Second week in a row that UNLV has made the trip here to New Jersey. They won their first outing against Princeton in their first postseason appearance in 11 years. One on their turf back on campus at UNLV in the Thomas Mack Center. But it is turned against them decisively here tonight. But again, you have the potential pieces. And look, we know college basketball is crazy from year to year as far as who is on the roster. But if they're able to keep some of these pieces in place, they've got a chance to be productive again next year. They really do. Ooh. And Ganga gets fouled. You know, and I tell you what, besides that, like yesterday I was here for practice and they didn't show the team got stuck on an elevator for like an hour or 45 minutes. An ominous I mean, sign so, of things yeah, to come. And everything. So. Kevin Kruger. He's obviously had a had a game plan in here tonight to try to take advantage of what Seton Hall does, but it hasn't been able to play out. That doesn't take away from what they've been able to do. Coming into this game tonight, they had won 12 of 15 games. And let me tell you, I mean, it's a short turnaround time, so it's not a heck of a lot you can change. You just want your team to be as fresh as possible and to do what you normally do. And I think for uh, that, that this is a great game uh, for Thomas to 
you know, see and be a part of in this environment as a freshman, and he'll grow from that. And Keelan Boone on the drive is fouled, and the Boone Twins, what's in the future for them? You, you take a look at what they've been able to do, a couple of fifth-year players for this program transferred in, and they really changed the fortunes of, of this team, and they're two of the big reasons why they've been able to get to the postseason here and make a run in the NIT. Oh, without question. I mean, and, and, you know, when I was in Vegas and did the game there, I got a chance to meet their guys. They're all such nice guys. I mean, and they really, they really took this seriously, and it was very, very important to them. Uh, so uh, this group will be back. And I tell you, that building was rocking in Vegas. I mean, it was incredible. Great atmosphere there. They had Anderson Hunt in the locker room after the game was over. And the layup is in from Arda Ozdegon. Yeah. Well, UNLV can talk about basketball history. This was the first gym that the Big East played their first game was right here in this place. The lob for Boone, and he flips it in. Approaching one minute left to go as Shaheen Holloway yeah. wants to get the reserves in. David Gabriel will make an appearance as the fans rise to their feet for Alamir Dawes, who was sensational tonight, and he really put the game in another gear. And then on the flip side for UNLV, the Boone Twins heading out for the final time getting hugs from the coaching staff as their season has reached its end. Sanders misses a three. The rebound grabbed and now ripped away as Webster on the move. Down the floor for Hicks. Hicks throws it up and in. He's played well tonight. Yes, he has. It will be Seton Hall against Georgia. In one NIT semifinal next week. That's going to that's be a heck of a ball game. Those teams will face on April 2nd at Hinkle Fieldhouse. The jumper is in from David Tubek. Fifteen seconds left to go. The sixth all-time meeting between these two programs will go in the bank for Seton Hall. You don't think these fans appreciate this team? They love it, and they love their Seton Hall Pirates. Seton Hall advances to the NIT semifinals with a wire-to-wire -wire win against UNLV, 91 to 68. They will take on Georgia in the NIT semifinals next Tuesday. Meanwhile, in the other semifinal, Indiana State will take on the winner of VCU and Utah, which will follow us next. An outstanding evening here from Walsh Gymnasium. Seton Hall improved to 4-0 at Walsh this season. They advance to the NIT semifinals. For Perry Clark and our entire crew, I'm Derek Jones saying so long. We'll take you to the studio coming up next.